Good morning. Welcome to worship at Seven Locks Baptist Church. We are delighted to have you join us today on this beautiful last Sunday in September. Uh, we are going to have a great time of worship today as we praise God and we pray together. We study the scriptures. We're so glad that you've chosen to join us, whether on the lawn or online. It is great to see you today. Our first song this morning is Reckless, Reckless Love, so please stand and join us.
Our scripture reading this morning comes from Hebrews chapter 7, verses 11 through 28. If perfection could have been attained through the Levitical priesthood, and indeed the law given to the people established that priesthood, why was there still a need for another priest to come, one in the order of Melchizedek, not one in the order of Aaron? For when the priesthood is changed, the law must be changed also. He of whom these things are said belong to a different tribe, and no one from that tribe has ever served at the altar. For it is clear that our Lord descended from Judah, and in regard to that tribe, Moses said nothing about priests. And what we have said is even more clear if another priest like Melchizedek appears, one who has become a priest not on the basis of regulation as to his ancestry, but on the basis of power of an indestructible life. For it is declared, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. The former regulation is set aside because it was weak and useless, for the law made nothing perfect. And a better hope is introduced by which we draw near to God. And it was not without an oath. Others became priests without any oath. But he became a priest with an oath when God said the Lord has sworn and will not change his mind you are a priest forever because of this oath Jesus has become the guarantor of a better covenant now there have been many of those priests since death prevented them from continuing in office but because Jesus lives forever he has a permanent priesthood therefore he is able to save through him because he, is always, because he always lives to intercede for them. Such a high priest truly meets our need. One who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens, unlike the other priests. He does not need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. He sacrificed for their sins once and for all when he offered himself for the law appoints as high priest men in all their weaknesses but the oath which came after the law appointed the son who has been made perfect forever our next song is hymn number 227 praise him praise him so please stand and join us together Lord Jesus we love you great and merciful God thank you for the beautiful sunshine to gather and worship thank you that your name is above all names we gather in your name the only name that it has the power 
anywhere in creation to save, and that is in the name of Jesus. And we come to lift you up today. Father, help us to trust in you, to walk with you. Thank you for providing for us in so many ways. Provide for us now and give us faith, give us hope. Lord, we love you and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our next song is hymn number 411, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus, so please stand and join us. things for our viewers watching at home that all of the folks on the lawn are experiencing now one of the added benefits of a mask during this season is that it's really great to prevent from gnat attacks because that is also a real and prevalent thing especially when the weather warms up like it has today but it's great to be together as we continue in our time of worship let's pray together lord god we love you we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for his grace and his mercy poured out. We thank you that he is everything to us. God, we thank you for his presence in our life as our friend, as our savior, as our high priest who goes before you, interceding for us on our behalf. God, what a great joy and pleasure and opportunity and privilege it is that we have to have a God such as this to worship and lift up Speak to our hearts now, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So this month, we've been talking about this concept of Jesus being our high priest. Being the one who stands before God as our representative. The one who has made a way for us by his death and his resurrection, which offers a lasting and permanent sacrifice for us. But as we wrap up this time discussing this with Hebrews chapter 7, I want us to think for just a moment just what is it about Jesus, about Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, this whole concept of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the concept of the Trinity that's presented in Scripture. What is it that makes it stand out? from above, above and beyond that which we've always 
all these other faiths that, that we have represented around us in culture, in the world, what is the hope that we cling to? Well, I think it's two things. Now, it's not just two things, but these are the two that I think are the most important. First of all, so many of the other faiths of the world, they emphasize what we must be doing what we must do to be thought of as acceptable in the eyes of God. Whereas the gospel says the opposite. This is what has been done for you. And it is by receiving this gift that you are accepted and acceptable. And what has been done for us is that our high priest has gone before us. Jesus, the son of the living God, the one and only who claimed to be God comes and he stands in our place. And after he has stood and taken our place on the cross and looked into the abyss of hell and eternal separation from God, now he stands at the right hand of God. He sits, he stands, he is in the presence, in the throne room of God, however you like to explain it, because Scripture talks about it in a lot of different ways. But any, however you like to express that, His presence is there before God now interceding on our behalf. And He truly is a high priest like no other. And there's three ways that we're going to explore this this morning. One, because He's good. Because He is, he is the embodiment of grace. And His claim to be our high priest is beyond anything that any human could ever claim. It's not based on lineage. It's not based on procedure. It is based on an ancient promise, an ancient fact that God is good and that He created creation in love. And when creation turned its back on Him, He slowly began a process of crying out to creation. And when they had heard it so many times from heaven and through the prophets, He finally sent His Son to love us, to walk among us, to be born just like all of us, to offer His life for our sins, and then to rise again with the hint of power. Jesus is our high priest because of His grace and His mercy, because of the ancient promise that God made to humanity that said, I love you and I'm going to keep revealing myself to you. That is the claim that Jesus has. And finally, because Jesus is perfect in ways that no one else ever could be. And because His ministry comes with power, like no other. And that's what we're going to explore as we dive into the text today. It's a long text, so I'm just going to hit a couple of high points in summary. But what the author of Hebrews is saying is, look, if we've had a priesthood and we've had the establishment for so long, why now do we need a new high priest? And, and wait a minute, too. All of the high priests as established by Moses came from the house of Aaron. Yet Jesus, if you look at his genealogies, doesn't descend from the house of Aaron, but comes from the line of Judah. It's connected in different ways through his stepdad, Joseph, and through his mother, Mary. Why is it now, if we, if we need a new high priest, why is he coming from a new family? What's going on here? Is the law changing now with Jesus? If he's not connected to Aaron, who is he connected to? That's simple. Melchizedek. The priest to whom Abraham, even back in the day when he was called Abram, before this life-changing event that Abraham went through, long before that, so early, early in the history of humanity, Melchizedek stands as a priest before the Lord, and Jesus' connection to that is a connection to the work that God has always been doing, and He should be because, as we talked about last week, He's the Son of God. But how is Jesus different? The author of Hebrews says, well, he's different because he doesn't have to offer sacrifices anymore because he is the sacrifice. 
and because his life is not, his priesthood and his ministry to us is not based on human regulations. It's not based on procedures. It is based on the power of his indestructible life. And because of this connection he has to the ancient work, what God has been doing since the dawn of time, he alone is perfect. He alone is blameless. He alone can stand before the throne of God, which he does, always interceding for us. This is what makes him our great and holy high priest. Because he is more than any human could ever be. Every human priest who's ever stood, the reason there's a long line of high priests is because they all wear out and eventually they pass away. They die. Because people age and they eventually, that's it. Jesus is eternal. Jesus lives forever. Which is what equips him to be our high priest. So a couple of high points just to hit is the author of Hebrews is explaining more and more of Jesus' ministry and the quality of who he is as a high priest. For, for a very, very, very long time, the sacrificial worship that took place in the temple followed, and even going back before the temple was built to the tabernacle in the wilderness in the days of Moses, it was his brother Aaron who was designated as the priest who worshiped, led the people in worship before God and offered sacrifices for their sins. When God gave the law to Moses, which was meant to be as an identity of this is who I am and you people of Israel, this is who you will be. You're going to follow me. This is what it means to be my people. It is Aaron who led them in that worship and later those of his descendants. And this was for a long, many hundreds of years, probably several thousand. Now granted, if you read the Old Testament, you do see there are gaps in the, the ministry in the temple because the people wandered away and they, they served other gods and they allowed things to take place in the temple that should not have been. But it always came back to the Levitical priesthood, that is Aaron's family. But the problem is, the question that the author of Hebrews says is, now wait a minute, if the way we've been doing things works, why is it that the law has no power to save us? I mean, if you think about it, this mirrors a statement that the Apostle Paul makes several times about how, wait a minute, when the more I studied the law, and look, Paul studied the law under Gamaliel, who was the, the scholar of all scholars of the Pharisees in the first century. He said, the more I became in touch with the law, the more I understood how big of a sin problem I had and how I could not kick it. And I tried to be good on my own, and it did not work. But I found all of these acts to be refuse compared to the insurmountable and unsurpassable knowledge of knowing God through Christ Jesus. And so the author of Hebrews says basically the same thing, just a different way. If what we were doing was bringing us to God and saving us, why did Jesus have to come? And he says it's very simple because it wasn't working, because it was temporary. And by linking back to Melchizedek, a priest of Salem way back in Genesis chapter 14. I told you I would tell you a little bit more about him. And I can actually tell you a little bit more about him. And in that little bit, you will know everything that I know. Because he is very mysterious. In the sense that he is a king and priest of Salem in Genesis 14. He appears after Abram has won a great victory and rescued his nephew Lot. And he appears to bless Abraham and Abraham sacrifices the tenth of all that he has received from his plunder to this priest. Now the thing that the author of Hebrews wants us to know is that Abraham sacrificed, gave this offering to be sacrificed on his behalf to Melchizedek and Melchizedek's blessing comes as one who is greater than Abram or Abraham. It gets confusing in the early part of Genesis, but it's Abraham. That's who we know him as. And so why is it important that 
the author of Hebrews is, is tying this together because he's saying that so much of the identity of the Jewish community that he was writing to in the first century is rooted in the law of Moses and all that Moses has done. And to be sure, Moses was an important part. He was raised up by God. He was a great deliverer. He was a great teacher. He was a great leader. But as the law of Moses began to circulate through time and space, so many human beings added over and over more rules and regulations until the law of Moses did not look like the law of Moses. It looked like something else, which is why Jesus said, you know, how, how can I compare this generation? What can I say about them? But they honor me with their lips, and their, but their hearts are far from me. And their teachings are nothing but rules taught by men. You know, they're never happy. They're never satisfied. No matter what, what you present to them, there's always this, this specter of doubt hanging over them. And Jesus at that time indicated a longing to gather them together. Like a mother gathers, mother hen gathers its chicks, but they refused. And so again, the author of Hebrews is making this plea, making this this argument, look, Jesus is the one for us now because what we had through the law of Moses cannot save us. And he ties Jesus to Melchizedek because Melchizedek is older, is, a, is an older connection, not to Moses, but to Abraham, to the promise that God said he was going to make Abraham a great people and to make his descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. That's actually a biblical tongue twister. Try to say numerous as stars in the sky and sand on the... Uh, see, I can't even do it twice. Sand on the seashore. I had to concentrate more than I have to when I play guitar chords to get that out. But, but Melchizedek is a link to that. And the mystery of Melchizedek is he appears in Genesis 14 and we don't see him again. He pops up as a reference in the Psalms and then he's here in he Hebrews 7. So we, all we know is he was a priest and a king, but the connection is what the author of Hebrews wants us to get, is that he's connected to Abraham. Not simply Moses, but going back even further. And he wants to make that same connection with Jesus. Now others have speculated more about Melchizedek and more about who he is, but most importantly for our purposes today, it's the metaphor. It's the connection that there... That Melchizedek has this, this origin that is just unknown and not ever explained completely. And Jesus is very much the same. We know he's the son of God. We know that he was born as a human being, both fully God and fully human at the same time. We understand who his stepdad was and who his mother was. We know God is his father, but there's still so much about how all of those moving parts fit together that we just cannot know yet on this side of eternity it's a great mystery and, and sometimes a matter of faith but in making that connection he's saying that that the law could not produce life and Jesus's connection goes back beyond Moses so it has precedent it is further established it's not some upstart thing where Jesus is trying to usurp authority he actually has the authority because he is one like Melchizedek who proceeded who came before Abe, um, before Moses and Aaron he's come before and so that means his connection and his ability to teach and to speak and to offer himself as our sacrifice is greater than that of the Levitical priesthood and that's something that needs to be understood and grasped because he wants us to understand who, what Jesus is doing for us and also to understand that, that the law had a timeline. It was, it was actually temporary. Because Jesus has come as a fulfillment of what began in the dawn of creation. Continued with Abraham's relationship with God. And we get a glimpse of it with his interaction with Melchizedek. And now Jesus is coming to fulfill it. To be the high priest that, that we could never have. Because of whether you want to talk about the abuses that were taking place in the temple or you just want to talk about the fact that the high priests were, eventually they all died. They were not eternal. 
But the point that the author of Hebrews makes is that Jesus is eternal. His priesthood is tied and based to his indestructible life. They killed him once. Three days later, he rose from the dead. He's not dying again. He is eternal. So his ability to lead, to teach, to instruct, to be our sacrifice never ends. And it gives him authority, which I think if, if you have to do a little bit of deep digging there, but I believe it's a connection back to the Gospels who all said that the people flocked to Jesus. They could not wait to hear what he had to say because he taught not like the teachers of the law, but as one with authority. And so here the author of Hebrews is saying Jesus is our high priest and that he has the authority to speak because he is connected to something much older than the law of Moses. He is connected to God himself. And he has authority because he has power. He has the power to save. And he has the power to intercede for us, which he always does. He is always interceding on our behalf. He's always speaking to God for us. He's our liaison. He's our mediator. He's the guy on the inside, however you want to say that. Whether he's saying, Father, forgive them. Or he's saying, God, help them. God, they need encouragement right now. God, they need your power. We, have, we are calling them to do great things, but God, we got to pour into them. This is what Jesus is doing as our high priest. And the author of Hebrews says, and he alone can do it because he alone is perfect. He is the only one who could bring perfection. He is the only one who is pure and holy and blameless. And the amazing thing is, he gives it to us for free. He gives it to us and says, here, I'm interceding on your behalf. I'm bearing the brunt of so many things for your sake. So I want to leave you with one thing. So the priesthood of Christ is grace, it's authority, it's power. And it's connected to the work God has been doing since the dawn of time. And that's big. Because that means that it's not something new. It is the very foundation for which we were created to live. And even in that foundation now, God is so good that He has appointed His Son as our High Priest to stand before God and to intercede for us. Knowing that when we are struggling, we have the ability to pray and say, God, I am struggling. Lord Jesus, I need Your help. This is what's going on. God, forgive me of this sin. God, I need wisdom in this way. God, I need encouragement. God, I need the words. God, I feel like everything is spinning out of control around me. Lord, I need you to keep me sane. I need you to give me some peace. And in that moment, when we have those struggles, when we or we're just praying about our day, with good, bad, in the middle, wherever you are and wherever you find yourself right now, you have to know that as we pray that God is faithful and we have a high priest who is loving, compassionate, perfect and has power to affect change and to make a difference in our lives to when we pray and we ask Him for help. He says, okay, I got this. Bring it to me. Let me have it. And we'll work it out. Now, does it happen exactly always like we want? No, not all the time. But Jesus is working. He is interceding on our behalf, asking God to give us what we need. And because we have a high priest like no other, we can have great hope in knowing that it will be done according to God's will. That when you say, God, your will be done in my life, this is my struggles, Jesus, I need help, it'll be done. Maybe not exactly like you think it should be, but it will be done. And when it is, you will say, praise God that it was done your way, God, and not mine. Because I didn't know what I was doing. But you do. Jesus is interceding for us today. Will you respond? Will you go be so bold as to go to him and ask for that intercession, for that help? Because he's willing to grant it. Let's pray. Lord God, you are enough for us. 
We stand on that promise today that in the midst of everything we're going through, everything we're facing, God, you are our hope. You are our strength. Lord, we need you. Thank you for being our high priest. Thank you for being everything that we need. God, would we trust in that today? God, would you allow that to change our lives? May we not leave this time together the same as we entered it. Lord, we love you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our final song for this morning is Enough, so please stand and join us. Thank you so much for coming to worship this morning and being a part of what God is doing, whether you're connecting with us here live on the lawn or online. It is great to be gathered in the name of Jesus. Uh, as we go from this place, a couple of announcements. Next week, if you come at 10 a.m., thank you. you. That means you just joined the setup crew because we are going to start worshiping at 11 a.m. next Sunday. Uh, we were worshiping at 10 because we needed it to be cooler, and now the seasons are changing, and we're going to worship at 11, so it will be warmer. But we promise if you'll come an hour later and sleep in for us, we'll feed you. Next week, we're going to have our friends and family picnic. We're doing it a little differently this year. We're going to have box lunches, bottle water, so we're not sharing germs, but we are going to share fellowship. We'll spread out. Uh, you can sit in your chairs. You can bring an extra picnic blanket. Uh, to sit with your folks, spread out a little bit. But if you'd like to come and be a part of this, we are thankful and we are praising God that we've found a way to pull this off. 
If you would like to sign up for that before you leave, please see Laura Snyder, the, the masked lady, and she will um, get your name on the list. You can also call the church office this week and uh, let Eric know you want to come if you want to be a part of that. If you're watching this at home and you've not been able to get out but you'd like to come and eat, uh, you feel free to RSVP and just let us know. We'll bring it to your car. We'll mask up. We'll put a trash bag on and we'll just hand it to you and say it's good to see you and we'll back away because you are important to us. And if you want to come eat with us, we got plenty of spots on the hill. Uh, we'll, we want to share that time with you. Also, because we're moving to 11 next week, this is the last week for 6 p.m. Bible study with the Tates. They are moving back to 9.30 a.m. next week. So I can say that now so there's no confusion because you, it's now almost 11, so you can't get in your time machine and go back to 9.30 this morning. So there shouldn't be any confusion. So uh, 9.30 next uh, uh, Sunday, not Monday, 9.30 next Sunday for Bible study on Zoom with the Tates, uh, 11 a.m. worship, and noon for the friends and family picnic. See Laura today if you're on the lawn. Uh, let us know. Call the church office. And connect with us there. Uh, you can find that because we're on the internet. I'll just send you to sevenlocksbaptist.org. Phone number's there. Uh, you can connect with that. Connect with us that way in RSVP as well. Uh, also, don't forget there are Operation Christmas Child shoe. I said that right. Shoe boxes on the little table you can pick up to go. Uh, it has been great to worship with you today. As we go, we are going to sing uh, the bridge and chorus of enough one more time. Holding on to that promise that Jesus is enough. Jesus is enough any day, every day, and he's enough for us right now. And in the name of Jesus, we are going to make it through 2020. And we're going to praise God. And we're going to tell more and more people about Jesus. Because he is the one who has made a difference in our lives. May the grace of the Lord be with you. Let's sing together one more time. Lord, I Peace and serve the Lord.